Step 10 was to glue the brackets onto your top. Um, in that video, I used quick clamps, and we don't we have a limited amount of quick clamps, so I just want to point this out. This is also an option. It's a little more uh, cumbersome to use, but these are C clamps. You can see the shape. It's in the shape of a C, and again, you know. We're, we want to uh, squeeze that down pretty good, so I got three C clamps on each side. Um, when we put the C clamps on, just keep in mind, right? Again, I'll say it like the back is supposed to be nice and flush with this back edge, right? Now, here you can see we got some squeeze out with the glue, all right? So, our next step after the glue dries for a day. You're going to take the clamps off and we need to do some sanding. So I've taken the clamps off of mine um, and what we need to do is we need to sand it up a little bit for our, before our next step. Uh, you can see, hopefully you can see, um, you know, we have this, this squeeze out here, the glue that's squeezing out. We need to take care of that. We need to make sure that this is nice and uh, flush. So uh, probably for the most of us, what you're going to do is just use an 80 grit hand sander, then I'd go to 120 and then 220. Um, I'm a little disappointed in mine. Uh, like I said, this is kind of a difficult step, but what happened is it shifted a little bit. So this piece is shifted off the edge. So I'm going to get a little more aggressive uh, sanding this down. I want this thing to be nice and smooth. And also, you're going to find that the brackets uh, might not be exactly the right size. I, for the template for the bracket, I actually made the, the template just a little bit longer than probably the top for most people's projects. What happened is uh, everybody's top might be a little bit different depending on the size of your box and things like that. So here too, I'm gonna need to sand this down. So I would go ahead and sand this down before uh, my next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll talk about the next step. All right, so I've got uh, the side all nice and sanded here. It's perfectly smooth. I sanded to a 220. Don't forget this is a fine woodworking project. Take your time, do a good job. Nice and smooth here. I don't know if you can see here, but now I've got this all smoothed out. Everything's lined up. Um, so I've got my box sitting here. Remember what we did is we put trim all right, we've got this OG trim. We've got it in the front, the left, and the right. So when we go ahead and we put our uh, top on, what we want to do is we want we want to match the, tri the, the profile, the OG profile, down to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to router uh, the end, the front edge, and the other end. Okay, so we're not going to router the back. We're just going to do the two ends and the front edge. Now, before I go to the router table and I router this, let's think about what we know about the router table. I'm working with the router. This has happened over and over again. Uh, if we're going to router end grain, what happens when we go across, actually we, we do like here, we're gonna go across this way what happens, these wood fibers here, they're going to want to tear out. They're going to want to go this way. So what we want to do is we want to put a support stick here when we're routering to avoid tear out. So we always do the end grain first. So we got end grain here, we got end grain here. When you do the end grain, you definitely need a support stick. All right, so a scrap piece that we're going to use for support. Then also, why do I always say do the end grain first, is that if we do have, if we come across here and we do have a little tear out here, hopefully when we go to do the front edge, that tear out is going to get routered away. So that's why we um, router our end grain first. So let's go over to the router table and router up our edges. All right, so here we are at the router table. I need to point out that the guard, I was, we need to take the guard off when we're routering the top because these things are going to get in the way. So you got to be extra special cautious. Think about where your fingers are 
uh, in relation to that spinning bit. All right? So like I said, we're always going to do end grain first. I got my little support stick. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to run that thing through. All right. And if it doesn't come out good the first time, you just run it through a second time. It's not going to get any deeper, or um, um, it's not going to cut away your board anymore. Okay. So once you do that, all right? Maybe you got to send through a second time to clean it up. All right. Then you just rotate it around. We're going to go ahead. Do the end grain again, putting our support stick in, all right? If you bobble a little bit or, um, you know, it didn't quite come out right the first time, again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it a second time, all right? Now, after that, what we do is we spin it around and we're going to do the front edge, okay? That's the front edge. Back here is the, uh, the back. We don't want to do the back, so we're just going to go ahead and do the front edge. We do the front edge where we're going with the grain. Uh, you don't need the support stick anymore, and you'll find it uh, routers much easier. Now, another thing I want to say is that when you're using wood like maple and especially cherry and black walnut, if you stop, if I was going through and I stop for a second and then I continue on, what's going to happen? It's going to put a burn mark. All right. So what we want to do is we want to not super fast, but we want to move this thing through relatively fast. All right, fast and steady, and see how that comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so I routered this edge, and I had to do a couple different passes on it to, to smooth it all out. And you can see what I'm talking about, this burning right here, all right, because I was taking off so much material, I really couldn't go fast through it. And so it was going slow and it, and it burnt the wood. Now, the burning is, it kind of goes down into the wood a little bit. So it's very difficult to sand that off. So what I want to do is I want to try to um, get rid of the burning. Um, so what I'm going to do, all right, is I'm going to take a, a wrench and I'm going to raise this bit up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to push it up. All right, not a whole bunch, but just a little bit. So now when I uh, cut, I'm only taking off a little bit, so I should be able to go faster and smoother. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to raise that bit up a little bit and I'm going to try it again. So I ran through again It made the profile just a little bit deeper. Um, it was much easier to router this time because I wasn't taking off as much, but I still have some uh, burning right here and some burning right here. So I'm going to go over and take some uh, sandpaper, some real fine sandpaper, and I'm going to see if I can get rid of some of that uh, burning along the edge. All right, here's a little recap on what we did in the third video. Um, after we took the clamps off, we had some glue squeeze out that we needed to take care of so I said sand the ends right never be afraid to sand in between all these steps the more sanding the better uh, step 12 what we did is we router the edges I said we did the ends we did the front and we're not gonna do the back all right and then after I came off the router table what I did I did some no, some more sanding and we can we can say this was probably maybe just a finish sanding so I'll just say finish here all right, I got the burn marks out. I got some of the uh, little wood fibers that were pulled up when we routered. So I went ahead and I sanded. All right, and then step 14, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a finish, which you'll see in a different video. But the top is now done and it's ready to be attached to the box. All right, so don't forget what you're going to do is make sure your process planning worksheet's filled out, all the steps so that you can make your own uh, box top.